The story starts when Hajime Nagumo is flung into the abyss of the Orcus Labyrinth, which is populated with monsters stronger than anything he's ever seen. His arm gets severed and eaten by a bear monstrosity. Hajime manages to get away by transmuting his way deep into the earth, where he luckily comes across a divinity stone that forms a constantly replenishing pool of ambrosia healing fluid, allowing him to survive the amputation of his arm. In flashbacks, Hajime has no warrior talents, and his only genuine skill is transmute, which allows him to alter matter. When his class entered the dungeon, they were met by a behemoth, and he was pushed into the abyss by one of his classmates after attempting to rescue Kaori. Hajime begins to break down in the abyss owing to tremendous hunger and begins to hunt the extraordinarily strong wolves using traps. After eating, the monster's cells modify his, and only the ambrosia's ongoing mending saves him. Due to the constant tearing apart of his muscles caused by the symbiosis of his and the monster's DNA and the mending of the ambrosia, his body evolves, becoming considerably stronger. He continues to hunt monsters after his metamorphosis, eating them to gain levels and obtain their physical and magical skills. He even uses his transmutation ability to develop strong weaponry through trial and error, such as Donner, his first handgun. He hunts and eats the bear creature that ate his limb, before hunting for a path deeper into the abyss. The king is informed of Hajime's death and unable to accept the death of a hero, forbids any mention of the tragedy. Through memories, Kaori's buddy Shizuku tells that the Pope summoned their high school class and their teacher to this realm to fight demons and monsters as heroes. She senses Hayama acting oddly, but she doesn't hear him comforting himself that no one saw him hit Hajime. Hajime ultimately makes it to a massive stone door and overcomes the guardians stealing keys from their bodies. Kaori is adamant about not giving up her search for Hajime. Hajime discovers a young girl imprisoned in a crystal behind the doors but decides to leave her, assuming she is a monster imprisoned for a cause. She acknowledges that she is an eternal vampire princess, but claims that she was betrayed by an uncle who desired her status but was unable to kill her, so he sealed her away. Hajime sets her free because he feels sorry for betraying her. She asks Hajime for a new name after deciding to drop her old one, and he calls her Yu after the moon, as her golden hair reminds him of moonlight. A gigantic scorpion creature attacks Hajime and Yu. Yu recovers her magic by feeding on Hajime's blood, and the two of them destroy the scorpion. Hajime informs Yu that all vampires were exterminated 300 years ago making her the last vampire. According to you, the labyrinths were established by mavericks, great magic users who tried and failed to overthrow God. As a result, they each built a labyrinth as a refuge against God's wrath, and they may still be alive on the deepest floors. Hajime transforms the scorpion's shell into a rifle he called Schlagen. Hajime informs you about his betrayal, but he doesn't care about his peers or vengeance, all he wants is enough power to return to Japan, and since Yu doesn't have a home, he invites her to accompany him. The labyrinth is revisited by Hajime's classmates. Hajime and Yu enter a floor where a plant-like creature has infected all monsters and is controlling them psychically. Yu has been infected, but one of the monsters Hajime had eaten previously has rendered him immune to the illness, allowing him to slay the monster. Yu later seduces Hajime by stripping down to his underwear and drinking his blood. They arrive at the bottom floor a few days later and ready to face the ultimate boss monster. The ultimate battle, a massive hydra-like monster with six heads, each capable of a distinct sort of magic and one of which can cure the others, is confronted by Hajime and Yu. Yu is almost eaten while distracted by the fear-inducing hypnosis of a second head, so Hajime kisses her awake. Hajime uses Schlagen to destroy three heads, including the healing head, while Yu uses lightning to destroy the remaining three. A seventh head appears unexpectedly before they can relax. Hajime sustains an injury while defending Yu, and Schlagen is destroyed. Seeing Hajime unconscious, Yu drags him to safety and tries to attack the monster with his pistol. Even when asleep, Hajime hears Yu's cries and improves his speed to the point where he can avoid all strikes. 
he throws grenades all over the place, causing the ceiling to collapse on the skull and allowing you to finish it off with lightning. Hajime passes out from tiredness when the final door opens. Meanwhile, Hajime's teacher, Aiko Hatayama, has been summoned as a hero and is arguing with the Pope, who wants them to re-enter the labyrinth. As long as Aiko continues to use her fertility magic to support the kingdom's failing agricultural, the Pope agrees to only send pupils who volunteer. Hajime who has lost his right eye wakes up in bed with you, and discovers they have arrived at the Maverick's house. In front of a magical circle, they discover the Maverick's skeleton. A magic that activates a recording left behind by the Maverick, forces Hajime to analyze his memories. The Maverick reveals himself as Oscar Orcus, and Hajime is deemed worthy of learning the truth about the Maverick God fight because he defeated his maze. Hajime's classmates enter the labyrinth and fight the behemoth they believe is responsible for Hajime's death. Before vanishing, Oscar bestows upon Hajime his abilities and memories. Hajime realizes the Mavericks are liberators and reveals that he has inherited Oscar's ancient creation magic which allows him to imbue magical traits on transmuted items to create artifacts. They bury Oscar, and Hajime retrieves his ring, which controls a door to the surface. Hajime makes the decision to conquer all of the labyrinths in order to obtain their ancient magics. Hajime spends two months learning as much as he can from Oscar's treasure, library, and workshop constructing weapons and vehicles and equipping himself with an advanced prosthetic arm and a mystical jewel to replace his eye. Yu continues to seduce him, so he offers her a magical ring and tells her that her schemes would make them enemies of the church and their god, Ehit, in the end. As they teleport to the surface, Yu promises to stay with him no matter what. She Haulia, a rabbit girl, eagerly awaits the arrival of Hajime and Yu. Hajime and Yu try to ignore her when they arrive because she is a nuisance. Hajime eventually chooses to listen, and she tells that her tribe is in danger from monsters, and she predicted Hajime would help them using her magical power to foresee the future. Hajime accepts in exchange for her directing them to a great tree listed in Oscar's books. When Hajime arrives at the tribe's woodland, he kills a number of creatures by using She as bait. The rabbit men request Hajime's assistance because they are tired of being powerless. Hajime struggles to overcome their innate rabbit-like timidity, so he subjects them to a ruthless training regimen of kill monsters or I'll kill you instead, transforming them into fearless monster killers. Shea leads them to a tree that Hajime believes is the gateway to another labyrinth. However, a nearby stone slab with slots for rings similar to Oscar's convinces Hajime that this labyrinth will only open once he has vanquished the others. The rabbit men decide to keep training and guard the tree until Hajime returns. She, having fallen in love with Hajime, travels with them and Yu is forced to let her after She technically won a duel by managing to scratch Yu's face. They make their way to Rison Gorge, which houses the entrance to another labyrinth. They are greeted by the voice of Milady Ryson, a hyperactive maverick who has constructed a maze-like labyrinth full with practical jokes aimed primarily at Shea. Several of Hajime's classmates leave the labyrinth to assist Aiko on the farms. Hajime and the girls make it to the bottom of the maze, where they will meet the boss, Milady herself, who is controlling a massive robot. They finally fracture her crystal heart after a long battle. Though Hajime maintains he has no intention of fighting Ehit, Milady promises him that he will one day be a god killer. However, as they approach the treasure room, they discover the true Milady's spirit within a little, cartoonish golem, which She punishes for all the pranks. She gives Hajime her ring and Yu her ancient gravity magic for finishing the maze. She then uses a whirlpool to remove them from the labyrinth albeit She drowns due to her inability to swim. Hajime revives her with CPR but attempts to drown her again once she awakens and seizes the opportunity to violently kiss him. They arrive to an inn, exhausted, where She insists that Hajime spend the night taking her virginity. Now that Hajime has been publicly humiliated, he punishes She once again. 
The Adventurers Guild asks Hajime to locate missing adventurers, including a noble son. They proceed to a nearby farming village. Unaware that Aiko and many classmates are visiting the farms, albeit one classmate, Shimizu, has vanished. Hajime attempts to stay away from them, but they can hear Shei addressing him by name. Aiko confronts him, tearfully, about his whereabouts, but he ignores her. When they come face to face with an arrogant Templar knight who insults Shei, Hajime injures him badly. His new harsh personality has stunned and terrified his friends, but Aiko swears she will find a way to bring him back. Later, Hajime pays Aiko a solo visit to tell her the truth about the demon struggle. Several people discovered the truth centuries ago. The god Ehit was not on their side, but was simply directing the conflict for his own amusement. To rescue mortals from Ehit's oppression, these humans became the liberators. Unfortunately, Ehit had them labeled heretics and called mavericks through the church. The labyrinths were erected by the last liberators to protect their ancient magics until someone worthy of conquering Ehit came along to claim them. Before he leaves, he informs her unequivocally that one of his classmates attempted to murder him. The next morning, Aiko and the students insist on assisting them in their hunt for the explorers in the mountains, as Aiko wants to learn more about the liberators. Once in the mountains, Hajime searches for the adventurers with transmuted drones connected to his jewel eye. They track down the noble's son, Will, the sole survivor, who confesses that they were assaulted by a monster army and a black dragon. They are assaulted by the dragon as they return. Hajime successfully knocks it out of the sky and uses his pile bunker, which can drive a xanthium stakes through any material, to pierce its armor. The dragon almost escapes until Shei uses Drucken to knock it out. Rather than piercing the armor, Hajime sadistically shoves the spike into the anus, the only unarmored place. The dragon, however, reveals she is a female dragonborn capable of taking human form and begs him to remove the stake in exchange for everything she knows as a result of the suffering. She explains that she was magically forced to assault Will and his companions and as retribution, she agrees to assist them in stopping that person. Even though Hajime intends to kill her, Yu persuades him to spare her. He takes away the stake, and the dragon transforms into Tio, a shameless masochist who admits she enjoyed the stake a little too much. Now, their ally Tio informs that the person in question, whoever he is, has amassed a force of 60,000 monsters and is plotting an attack on the farming community. When Aiko asks him to fight, Hajime is persuaded. He erects barricades around the village to keep Tio at bay, who finds his combination of neglect and verbal abuse thrilling. Hajime humiliates Aiko, goddess of plenty, by dedicating their victory to her, then massacres the monster army with transmuted mini guns and rocket launchers. As the demons retreat, Hajime and Shei hurry to capture the strange robed commander with his firepower expended and Yu and Tio out of magic. Hajime realizes the commander as Shimizu, who has gone missing. Shimizu admits he was dissatisfied that he wasn't the only summoned hero, especially given how weak he was in compared to his more powerful classmates, so he made a deal with a demon for power in exchange for the death of Aiko. A monster sniper shoots him from behind as he slashes Aiko with a lethal needle. Hajime shoots the sniper and kisses Aiko to heal her with ambrosia. As Shimizu lies dying, he pledges his allegiance to Hajime, who recognizes the deception in his eyes and murders him cruelly, shattering Aiko. As they leave, Yu correctly predicts that the sniper was aiming at Aiko, but Hajime finished killing Shimizu so Aiko would blame him rather than herself allowing her to recover psychologically much faster. A slave gang kidnaps Mayu, a rare mermaid infant, and plans to sell her. Hajime receives Will's pay and delivers him to his father. They decide to take a break and go sightseeing around the city. They meet a sentient talking fish in an aquarium and decide to set him free. As a thank you, he spreads word of a kidnapped mermaid. Hajime and Shei traverse the city until he discovers the kid in the sewers beneath the city and saves her, angering the slaver's master. 
Hajime and Shay manage to keep Mayu safe, but they're at a loss on what to do next. Yu and Tio consider the possibility of sharing Hajime. Despite Mayu's pleas to stay, Hajime chooses to hand her up to the city guards. After turning over a sad Mayu, the guardhouse is assaulted, and Mayu is abducted once more. Enraged, Hajime begins killing known slaver colleagues in preparation for the next auction. Many children were saved along the way. He assassinates the boss, saves Mayu, and blows up the mansion with the auctioneers inside. Mayu begins to refer to an uneasy Hajime as Papa, prompting Yu, Shei, and Tio to demand that Hajime make them all pregnant with his offspring. Despite his reservations, Hajime does an excellent job at parenting Mayu. They arrive at the city where Hajime and the other heroes have been summoned. When Hajime visits the Adventurer's Guild, he runs into a worried Endo, one of his classmates, who informs him that Katalya the Demon has prepared a trap for the rest of the class in the labyrinth. The class is overpowered by Katalya's summoned monsters, and they are unable to even approach her to try to kill her. Hajime is unconcerned until Endo irritates Mayu, at which point he refuses to help at all. Suzu, one of the students, gets hurt, and the rest of the class flees. To stay alive, Hayama proposes making contracts with the devil. The main hero, Kuki, approaches Katalya, but he hesitates as she drops a necklace with a photograph of her boyfriend, realizing she has a life outside of the conflict. He gets gravely harmed while he is hesitating. Hajime chooses to save his class with the help of the ladies, reasoning that only one of them attempted to murder him, implying that the most of them are innocent. Shizuku's sword is shattered, so she and Kaori prepare to die together. They are, however, saved at the last moment by Hajime, who has built a passage through the higher levels using his pile bunker. The fact that Hajime is still alive surprises everyone. Hajime understands Katalya's magic and eliminates all of her demons. Hayama is scared of Hajime's return, thinking that he would be identified as his attacker. Shizuku is given a new unbreakable sword by Hajime. Mayu refers to Hajime as Papa, which perplexes everyone and irritates Kaori. Katalya tries to run but is apprehended by Hajime, who tortures her for information, frightening his classmates in the process. Hajime discovers that a powerful demon has cleared one of the labyrinths and is forming a monster army with its ancient magic. Hajime murders Katalya despite Katalya's warnings that her lover will kill him in retaliation. Kuki is angry that Hajime murdered the helpless Katalya. Hajime berates him for being too weak to do what is required, threatening Kuki that if he or any of his classmates try to stop him, he would kill them as well. Kaori expresses her love for Hajime, but he declines because he is already in love with Yu. Despite this, Kaori insists on joining his squad to battle with Yu. As they leave in Hajime's transmuted SUV, Kaori is angry to learn that she will have to share the rear seat with Shay and Tio, while Yu will be seated near Hajime. Hajime is dead set on returning to Japan, no matter who he has to kill, including God himself. If you loved this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on another one. Until next time, take care.